Hi everyone and welcome back to the part 2 of Neurology High Yield Clinical Presentations. Let's just get started. The first patient presents with a bilateral hand tremor. It's worse with movement and better with alcohol. This is an essential tremor. It can also get worse with anxiety or stress. Next is a patient that has a tremor present at rest. It's better with movement and is typically seen in Parkinson's disease. This is a resting tremor. Next, a tremor that's worse with goal-directed movements. They have nystagmus and gait ataxia. This is a cerebellar tremor. Next is a patient presents with flailing hand movements unilaterally. There is a subthalamic nucleus lesion. This is hemibilismus. Next is a patient with pain in the legs. This is relieved by movement. They also have an associated iron deficiency anemia, seen as a low hemoglobin and a low MCV. This is restless leg syndrome. Next is a patient with a stoop posture, slowed movements, a tremor, and muscle rigidity. This is Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease is a problem with dopamine production in substantia nigra. You have a buildup of alpha-synuclein, which kills off the dopamine-producing cells. Next is a patient with sudden jerky body movements. It's usually bilateral, and there is a strong family history. This is Huntington's disease. In this disease, you have the caudate nucleus, which is atrophied, and there's a loss of GABA. The next patient is an elderly patient with forgetfulness. They have difficulty completing daily tasks. This is Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's disease tends to cause problems with daily tasks such as going to a grocery store or finding their way home. This is a buildup of beta amyloid and alpha tau protein. Next is a patient who presents hyperorality, hypersexuality, and a lack of disinhibition. This is frontotemporal dementia. This affects the frontal lobe and so they can have problems with decision making as well. Next is a patient who has hallucinations, tremor, and rigidity, followed by cognitive decline. This is Lewy body dementia. You want to be able to differentiate this in Parkinsonianism. In this condition, the hallucinations happen first, and then you have the Parkinsonian signs. Versus in Parkinson's disease, you have more of the tremor rigidity first, followed by the hallucinations. Next is an elderly patient with a past medical history of hypertension, diabetes, or peripheral artery disease. They have problems with planning, organizing, solving problems. This is vascular dementia. This is going to cause problems in day-to-day -day functioning, and this is going to be a stepwise decline. Next is a patient with rapidly progressive dementia, nystagmus, and hyperreflexia. This is kutzwald jacob disease. This happens due to a buildup of the 1433 protein inside the brain. Next is a patient with forgetfulness. The CD4 count is less than 200, and the MRI is showing generalized cerebral atrophy. This is HIV-associated dementia. Next is a patient with gait ataxia, urinary incontinence, and cognitive decline. This is normal pressure hydrocephalus. You have to think about wacky, wobbly, wet. Next is a patient who has a headache, papilledema, and the arachnoid granulations are affected. This is a communicating hydrocephalus, also called non-obstructive. Next is a patient who has headache and papilledema, but the stenosis is occurring before the retinal granulations within the ventricular system. This is a non-communicating or obstructive hydrocephalus. Next is a patient with cerebral atrophy after a neurodegenerative condition and a normal intracranial pressure. This is hydrocephalus ex vacuo. This is not an actual hydrocephalus. This is a atrophy of brain tissue, so it looks like you have more water inside the brain. Next is a patient with numbness in the hands, blurry vision, muscle weakness. It comes and goes, and the MRI is showing demyelinating plaques. This is multiple sclerosis. Notice this is an autoimmune disease, so there's going to be relapsing and remitting symptoms, and it tends to get worse for every episode that happens. Next is a condition that's seen in MS, and it's an inability to adduct the eye. This is a medial longitudinal fasciculus lesion, or MLF lesion. Next is a patient who had a rapid correction of sodium, and now they have demyelination of the pons. 
This is osmotic demyelination syndrome. Remember, high to low, your brains will blow. What that means is you're going to build up intracranial pressure if you correct the sodium too quickly. From low to high, your pons will die. If you correct the sodium too quickly from low to high, your pons will demyelinate. The next patient presents a progressive leg weakness, a recent upper respiratory tract infection, or a, a recent GI infection, and a loss of deep tendon reflexes. This is Guillain-Barre syndrome. Next is a patient with a CD4 count less than 100, cognitive decline, and the MRI is showing demyelination. This is progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy seen very commonly in HIV. Next is a patient who has arithmetic patch on the forehead and capillary venous malformations. This is Sturg Weber syndrome. Next is a patient who presents with angiofibromas, perianguinal fibromas, and subependable nodules. This is tuberous sclerosis. Next is a patient with cafe au lait spots, Lish nodules, and neurofibromas. This is neurofibromatosis 1. Next is a patient with bilateral vestibular schwannomas, meningiomas, and ependymomas. This is neurofibromatosis type 2. Next is a patient with hemangioblastomas, renal cell carcinoma, and pheochromocytoma. This is von Hippel-Lindau disease. Next is a patient with a tumor that appears like a butterfly. It has the EGFR mutation. On biopsy, it appears necrotic and pseudopalsating. This is a glioblastoma. Next is a tumor in the frontal lobe. It appears calcified, and on biopsy, it has a fried egg appearance. This is an oligodendroglioma. Next is a tumor that's attached to the dura. It has small bodies on biopsy. This is a meningioma. This tumor can appear as if it's outside the brain because it's attached to the dura, which is the meninges. Next is a patient who presents with bitemporal hemianopsia. If it's a female, they can have milky discharge from the breast and amenorrhea. This is a pituitary adenoma. The reason they have the milky discharge and the amenorrhea is because of the increase in prolactin. Next is a patient with hearing loss, ear ringing, and on biopsy, it shows spindle cells with hypocellular myxoid areas. This is a schwannoma. Remember, this was seen in NF2. Next is a patient with heterogeneous mass in the cerebellum. There's Rosenthal fibers on biopsy and is positive for GFAP. This is a pilocytic astrocytoma, very common tumor in children. Next is the most common malignant tumor in kids. They present with a wide base gate. On biopsy, there's small uniform blue cells and homorite rosettes. This is a medulloblastoma. The wide base gate is due to the fact that it affects the cerebellum. Next is a patient who has a tumor that forms from the lining of the fourth ventricle. It also, on biopsy, has perivascular pseudorosettes. This is an ependymoma. Next is a patient with short stature and bitemporal hemianopsia. This is craniopharyngioma. You compress the pituitary gland and that leads to less release of growth hormone leading to a short stature. Next is a patient with bilateral papilledema. They can't gaze upwards and they have bilateral upward retraction. This is a pineuloma. Thank you for watching and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. See you in the last part.